lesson is the ULI's um, opportunity to change fundamentally the way we consider buildings. So now, one single website with easily accessible information gives you the full story, whether you're a consumer, whether you're an investor, whether you're a developer, one spot, one source of information. There are lots of easy wins in energy. Some are direct, some are indirect. In the winter, have your office building cleaned in the morning. The heat from the lights begins to warm up the building. If you have your building cleaned at night, the heat from the lights goes to waste. Think about the other elements of uh, how you're going to live. We're beginning to develop environments of very, very intense use of floor space. So we wouldn't like to put an animal in uh, factory farming conditions, but we're beginning to think of putting humans in those same boxes. We all know that's unhealthy. So we have to give people not only energy efficiency, but energy enjoyment. Uh, so less watts equals less heat equals more relaxed environment. Um, how do we do that? The cleverest way is to design it out. Now, when a new project comes along, and I've got one uh, with some partners that Waterloo Station, right in the middle of London, um, on a uh, very busy station. Uh, Elizabeth House will be about 1.5 million square feet, with a tower, retail, mixed uses. And a few years ago, when you started a new project, you would have thought, what does it look like? How will we build it? How would it be occupied? What kind of investment would it be? Would it rent well? Basic real estate questions. Now we have to think of energy. So the first thought one has is how are we going to analyse the site? What are its energy opportunities? How much shading do we need? How are we going to position the buildings so they're in the right spot? How are we going to look at the impact of the sun. So we think of it now in a way which is completely different. We're trying to think of Elizabeth House without too many fashion engineering tricks. So probably a, a slightly heavier structure, uh, a shaded structure, and a series of plant rooms where plant is used as little as possible. Uh, if we can reduce our loads, we can reduce our plant. If we can do that, we can increase our lettable space, our rental streams, our investment value. It's good sense to look at energy efficiency. It's bottom line profit. Recessions change our views of costs. So we've been through a period where land and construction costs rose to meet the debt available. Um, they've now got to fall to meet the debt available. Much smaller sums available. So recession has made us re-look at buildings. How we design them, how we build them, how we use them. And this is a period when innovation has come to the fore. If you innovate now, you get a good payback. At a time when the market's booming, people then tend not to worry about cost. They think it'll take care of, them, of itself. They're wrong to do so. But we're all optimists in the development world, and we tend to uh, think life will work out. So now, in a tough environment where making buildings work financially is difficult. Reducing energy costs is part of a bigger picture 
where all the costs have got to, re to reduce. We've got to have good architecture, good places on one hand, but less cost of construction. That means less equipment. That means more care. And a lot of this is about spending a lot of time up front in the design phase. How are we going to design this out? We can now model uh, these buildings much more skillfully than before. We can measure the impact of energy in great detail. We can uh, design on a CAD system the building so it moves about, so we see the impact of different shading systems, different mechanical systems, all with two objectives, better bottom line costs and more care for the community. The past decade or two have been based on always having a surplus of energy, always having spare capacity, always oversizing every piece of kit. Now we're going the other way. So all the waste that we saw for 10 or 20 years has got to go. The oversizing, the 100% standby, all those things that we probably secretly knew were rather extravagant, they're out. We're back to reality. We've got to control our costs and that means we've got to look at every aspect of the, the business. The first and the most important aspect of any business is its people. Overheads walk on two feet. So how can we motivate those people? Because buildings are really about profit. Commercial buildings are commercial operations. And if people feel comfortable, if they feel they're in an uplifting environment, a sustainable environment, they'll be healthier, there'll be less absenteeism, uh, there'll be um, less costs in terms of medical, and there'll be, there'll be more output. So getting a healthy environment comes from a concern for a holistic, a holistic approach. So getting a healthy environment comes from a concern for a holistic approach to buildings. It's not just about kilowatts. It's all about one overall theme of design. That starts with care. That starts with love of the detail. Any good developer is going to want to supply those to a consumer so that his people can enjoy the building. So it should be uplifting in terms of natural light. But natural light e equals sun. And sun's healthy in some ways and unhealthy in others. Develops too much energy. So a shaded building is good for, a, for tenant use. A, a highly efficient building where every foot of the building is usable means there are not areas which are wasted. Any wasted area can't be used, but it still uses elect electrical load. I give a simple message to the coalition government. Think simple. Think of using combined heat and power plants, local, 70% uh, efficient instead of 30%. Think of people walking to work. Think of a different style of the development. We all know the village green or the town square as a, an environment of a game of cricket or, or baseball. Um, we can walk to the pub to have a drink. We can go to the doctor's surgery. We can go to the library. We, our kids can go to school. They're not using energy. These are simple things that can be done tomorrow. They do require coordinated, complex thinking about how government departments can work together so their objectives overlap physically in the buildings. Buildings are very flexible. The school becomes the library, the library becomes the computer room, the computer room becomes a sports activity for kids, one school against another, the gym becomes a public gym at night, the gym becomes 
somewhere for kids to uh, have fun rather than cause damage on the street. A 10% drop in uh, carbon for most projects, buildings, is not very difficult. It's not painful. But this is an attitude of mind. It does require planning, does require thought. Um, but we all know if we plan our day a little more carefully, um, we, we can achieve these things. So in the UK, we followed the French um, with our bicycles from Paris, and we now have Mayor Boris's bikes. Simple way of saving energy. But another way of saving energy, which we haven't yet thought of, is in Manhattan, you'd know that walking five blocks would take you a few minutes because you know where you're going. In many cities, you don't know where you're going, so you wouldn't walk those five blocks. You'd probably take the subway or the tube. There are many ways of saving energy. So some modest uh, signposting of how to use a city, how to make a city a walking city, is energy efficiency. We have to move away from thinking this is about watts per square foot to thinking about our social life.